to the room one and the second evening plenary, Modern Day Mysticism and the Path to Peace. It's my great pleasure and honor to introduce Ariel Patricia and Sacred Stories Publishing, a co-sponsor of World Unity Week, and to also take this opportunity to give gratitude and a huge thank you to Ariel for supporting World Unity Week this year, for trusting this movement, this platform, and our team. Ariel, without your support, this event wouldn't be made possible. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And I'm sure I can say this on behalf of our entire team, as well as our audience. So uh, please, Ariel, over to you. Tell us a little bit about Common Sentience book series and introduce the authors that are with us um, this evening. Um, I'm so looking forward to this discussion. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Thank you, Irina. Um, I'm delighted that Sacred Stories is a sponsor of World Unity Week. Unity Earth, the Sign Network, and World Unity Week does such important work in the world, bringing all of this wisdom, bringing this consciousness, bringing us together in unity. And I see you're bringing on in unity some of the authors of our Common Sentience book series. And that's what we're here to talk about today, not only the book series, but the idea, the experience of modern day mysticism um, and how that brings us together. How when we experience our inner divinity, which we are doing, which we are doing as, as one of my authors, Ash Ruiz is going to say, when we show up and show out um, who we really are, then, then that changes the world. Everything changes. Um, I have, we have five, 14 books in the Common Sense and Serious series so far, and each book in the series spotlights a specific spiritual phenomenon and shares the grounded wisdom, which is so important. So we understand what these, what these spiritual experiences are and personal stories of people from around the world who are experiencing it. And then it takes you even deeper. It allows you through the words from the wisdom teachers who are the featured authors to have your own experience, to go deeper with practices and processes and tips on, on how you can do that. So we're going to talk about that all today and what these spiritual phenomenon are. But I have to just hold up some of the books because I'm so excited because I have some of the books already in print. So we have Angels. With Trisha McCann, and she's going to speak today. Who are the angels and how are they leading our celestial awakening? Animals, which is spirit animals, Dr. Stephen Farmer, acclaimed best selling author, Dr. Stephen Farmer. Stephen's not with us today, but his book, Animals, is available. be patient and Ariel will hopefully come back really soon yes yes I'm sure she will be back yes Julie is that is there anything you want to share in the meantime well if she drops off I will jump in we're going to talk about what makes this series so important right now and I really love the synchronicity of how it has literally fell on the the heels of neil donald walsh talking about our spiritual culture in the world and so um i can begin and and speak a little bit irene now i was next on the agenda and then we can bring in those books again and, and maybe patricia wants to add a little more and um then we can bring in what, what we're going to do is i'm going to speak a little bit on why it's time to normalize non-ordinary states of consciousness it's time and yeah yay and so we're going to talk about why and a little bit about the science the unitive narrative has been has been floating in the chat and we have a session on that tomorrow again with dr jude curavan and some of the other authors of it so this is an important conversation and so i'm just going to talk a little bit about that and then we're going to bring each of the authors in one at a time and they're going to talk a little bit about their books and so we'll just watch for patricia to come back in the room and if you want to go ahead and just spotlight me i'll just give a few minutes talking about normalizing 
the non-ordinary. It's time to normalize the non-ordinary. So we built our world around this false belief that we're separate, separate from one another, separate from earth, separate from all its inhabitants and the creative life force, the sacred and the very foundations of life. This week, we've been talking about those foundations of life. We've been embracing those foundations of life and really asking ourselves, how can we come into right relationship with the foundations of life? And in every Zoom room, convergence room that we've had, talking about these foundations has really brought us into the conversation of unity. Separation is merely an illusion. It's a flawed and outdated scientific theory. And it's a developmental stage of consciousness that we're quickly outgrowing. And we're going to learn more about that as we start bringing in these other pieces. And Irina, if you see who's who to, there you go, to mute. So um, since this is an outdated developmental stage of our consciousness, we're learning so much more. Einstein called it an optical delusion of consciousness. In the pursuit to understand the universe, Newtonian physics seeded this with the mechanistic worldview and every discipline of science followed suit by separating things into pieces and parts and disregarding this unseen mystery of life that we're going to talk about tonight and focusing only on the material world with logic and reason. So this worldview was not my reality. And like many, many, many of us listening right now and, and tuning in, it's not our reality. We've seen the unseen. We've seen that, that unseen mystery of life. My world had been shaped by multiple and regular experiences of non-ordinary consciousness, beginning with an early childhood near-death experience when I was four years old. And what I've learned is whether you have the direct experience of unity or you understand the science of unity, a narrative based on this, a whole worldview literally changes everything. The direct experience of unity is usually considered the mystical experience or spiritual experience. Psychology calls it an altered state of consciousness or a non-ordinary state of consciousness. It's often dismissed as woo-woo by the rational mind. And yet in 2009, one study showed us that 49% of Americans have had a mystical experience. And experts estimate it's much higher now. Imagine that more than half of our population have had a mystical experience. But get this, Abraham Maslow believed everyone has mystical experiences. Everyone. We just safely label them as a peak experience or we dismiss them altogether with that rational mind woo woo thing. We just kind of like say, no, 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 no. So what's our truth? Recent scientific discoveries across multiple disciplines and all scales support a revolutionary understanding, a leap in our understanding of ourselves and the unified nature of reality. Thousands of leading edge researchers are furthering this unitive narrative with rigorous, rigorous empirical studies. So unity is real. It's not just an ideal. We're here peace through unity. We're doing the 99 days of peace through unity. Unity is real. It's not just an ideal. We are all one and it's time to normalize the non-ordinary and reimagine everything. I'll wrap this up by just pulling this through with, we're learning this from athletes in flow states. We're learning this from artists and creatives in flow states. We're, we're talking about our direct spiritual and mystical experiences. Meditation is helping us now. There's a growing expo exploration into the psychedelics and psychoactive substances and what that's teaching us about unitive states. There's a growing exploration into the technologies and technology induced states and experiences. So science of the direct experience is emerging proportionately with the science into the nature of reality 
and our science of consciousness now. Like Neil Donald Walsh just said from the, our last session, the climate of the world is begging for this. A theology, a psychology, a sociology of oneness. And I'm going to invite every other branch of science as well to come into this unitive narrative and this oneness. I see heads shaking. It's time to live into unitive consciousness. And if we accept Timothy's invitation that unity is, period, let's live into that. Let's shift our perspective that unity is and make that choice every day. So this book series, You're In For a Treat, these authors are accelerating our pace of understanding into our innate spiritual capacities. We all have these innate spiritual capacities. It's an honor to be here and lift up their messages. And really, hopefully, these books that you're going to hear about tonight in the entire series, hopefully they will impact the hearts and minds of as many people that were impacted by conversations with God in our last session. I trust that they will. And so it's really an honor to be here and to talk about normalizing the non-ordinary. So if Ariel's back, I'm going to hand it back to Ariel. I am. I am back. And um, I think I'm on with you, Julie. Talk about unity. Talk about unity. I'm in Vietnam. I just dropped right off and Julie picked right up. So thank you so much. And I think you can all see why it's just such an incredible pleasure and honor and why I invited Julie to be a co-host this evening. And we'll be collaborating on a series that she'll be doing on the Common Sentience book series. Julie probably wasn't introduced properly because she is on the leading edge of personal, social, and global transformation, as you can see. And her popular podcast, The Dr. Julie Show, All Things Connected, is making connections that inspire and accelerate our individual and collective awakening. Um, and you're just, you're just absolutely brilliant. So Julie, thank you. And if I drop off again, I know you're on it, so I won't worry about it. Um, I wanted to, before I bring on Trisha McCann, because we're going to have some fun, because we're going to be we're going to be diving deep on angels and the muse and prayer and witch and guides and shamanism tonight. I want to hold up. This was the last book I was going to hold up. This is our brand new book in the series, Guides, Mystical Connections to Soul Guides and Divine Teachers. Marilyn and Gloria is with us this evening. So five books you can get right now nine more coming and we're going to talk about them. So um, I know Julie said everything I needed to say about common sentience, unity, the path to peace, modern day mysticism. So let's bring on our first modern day mystic. And this is Trisha McCannon. And Trisha is a renowned American clairvoyant, historian, author, and teacher who has traveled the world in search of answers to the greatest mysteries of the ages. She's a dedicated researcher and mystical symbologist. She's known as the mysteries expert, and she is the author of our book, which is available now, Angels, Personal Encounters with Divine Beings of Light. And so, Trisha, welcome. Welcome to our plenary and welcome to World Unity Week. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you know, I think the world of you, Ariel. Um, Ariel, I have to brag on her a little bit. She has an amazing company called Sacred Stories. And I've been very honored to produce about six classes, courses, entire courses for her live with video, which are on her website. Uh, and so I was very honored when she asked me to write this book. I'm the fourth book in the series. And there's a wonderful book with Steve Farmer on animals before me, uh, Sister Jenna on meditation, uh, um, uh, um, Anna Maria on nature. And so I got to be the fourth one. And what's so extraordinary about these books is there are three sections in each one. So the first section, I got to write many chapters. The last section I got to write, and this is true of all the authors. But the middle section is live stories from people just like you and me from all over the world who've had their own experiences that have been transformative and mystical. And so, you know, as uh, Julie was saying, there are people having these experiences all over the world, and it's only increasing. 
I think that we we all have had these for centuries. I mean, if you go back in time, you know, there were the great spiritual mystery schools, and there've always been the belief in, you know, the other world, in not just heaven and hell, but in fairies and divas and dragons and, and pulling back the veils to begin to have these experiences. And of course, angels are foremost among them because they're known in every possible culture of the world, not just in the Western Judaic Abrahamic religions, but over in India, over in Persia, over in China, over in Japan, among the Native Americans, among the South American Native people. So they are really universal. And of course, there's a lot of conversation about who and what they are. And I think part of this comes down to our increasing understanding of vibration and physics. When quantum physics was discovered at the beginning of the 20th century, we finally had the scientific tools to understand that behind big atoms are subatomic particles and that our consciousness interacts with these subatomic particles, essentially giving us access to link into the consciousness of the universe. So we've discovered since then that in the beginning, you know, was the word, there was sound, which science now calls phonons, which I think is so funny. And the sound becomes light, which are photons. And this produces, as it comes down through the various planes, at every dimensional level, we become, let's say, denser in vibration. So we all see each other because we're basically vibrating around the same frequency. Angels are beings who are living at the higher dimensional levels, who essentially vibrate at a much higher frequency, but can come in and take physical form. They can interact with us, whether it's through telepathy, whether it's through our dreams, whether it's through materializing in our living room, whether it's through appearing in a hospital and taking on the guise of a stranger or a nurse or a doctor where some miraculous healing occurs, or when we're out of gas and we're praying, you know, please somebody come along because it's 12 o'clock at night in the dark and who's going to save me? And suddenly, miraculously, the, the, the car comes along with the, the three guys dressed in white who fix your tire and give you gas and then vanish overnight. We have amazing stories. And one of the things that, you know, because I speak, not only do I write and speak, but I also use a lot of evidential energy, um, which would be video when I speak at workshops and conferences around the world. There are extraordinary films of actually angelic beings of light literally appearing in malls uh, or over houses. It's quite incredible the evidence out there now that we have video to, to pick up um, uh, things that sometimes our eyes can't always register. And in this book, I have... Um, some amazing historic accounts that are not just historic like George Washington, who had these two phenomenal angels, I think both Gabrielle and Michael appeared to him for telling three great crises. This was in 1777 after the Constitution was ratified and he was fighting in the winter of Valley Forge. He, he literally had these angels appear and show him the three tests that America would face, the American Revolution, the Civil War, and then one that is still yet to come, assuring Washington that this nation and its principles of democracy and freedom would prevail. We not only have stories of St. Francis and, uh, and many other historical figures that have changed world history, but we also have stories that are more recent. Russian cosmonauts in 1985, literally six of them that were total atheists when they, because they grew up during the time of the, the Soviet bloc and the Soviet Union where religion wasn't really practiced. And they actually looked out the window of their space capsule and saw these 70 foot long angels that they describe as large as 747s with wingspans as wide as an airplane that literally turned and smiled at them. And they were viewed on two separate occasions, one by three of the astronauts and the next time by three more, so six in total. We also have a story of an FBI agent who during the 9-11 attack literally arrived on the scene and looked up at the sky and saw 
thousands of angels above her. And this is a person who didn't even believe in angels. So I'm sure they were helping those souls transition over as they left their physical bodies to help them to the other side. So um, it was a wonderful book to write and wonderful opportunity for me to get to share uh, a lot of my experiences. I have had experiences with angels since I was little. And for in fact, talk about angels. My very first book was Dialogues with the Angels. Then I wound up writing a book about the angelic origins of the soul, because when I've, I've done over 6,000 readings where literally I would see how we all are connected with the angelic kingdom long before we came into this world. And then so it was a great honor for me to be asked to write this book. And I, I know some of our other writers and speakers, and they are also extraordinary people. So uh, what a joy and an honor to be included. And um, this is a book I've had. This book's only been out about two weeks, three weeks. And I've only done like three radio shows. And I've already had all these people calling me and saying, I read your book and it made me cry. It, it was so beautiful. And the fact that they're not only my stories, and but the stories of others in the books whose lives have been touched by angels and whose lives have been changed by these encounters tells us that angels are far closer than we might ever imagine. And that what it takes at the end of the day to connect with them is going into this place of love and surrender and into the place that this group really represents, which is unity consciousness. You know, when we're angry, when we're afraid, when we're in worry or in anxiety, maybe that's when we need the angels the most, but many times that's when we see them the least. But rest assured, they are around you day and night. You have only to invite them in and it can change your life. So thank you thank for you. having me. Yeah, Trisha, thank you so much. Yes, the, we led with the angels because the angels walk before us. They walk before me. They lead, I believe they lead all of us. So thank you. Um, thank you for sharing that. And the angels walk before us and the angels protect us. I, I know that deep in my heart and our guides, our guides are here with us as well. Angels can be guides are, as well but we also have many different types of guides. So I'd like to bring on Marilyn Amoria, who is the author of our new book, Guides, Mystical Connections with Soul Guides and Divine Teachers, and to talk about who the guides are and how they do walk with us on this path. And hopefully on this path, we're, we're all walking together to peace. Yep. So let me just give you a quick, Marilyn Amoria is a gifted psychic, medium teacher and coach with an unmatched capacity to ignite deep soul level transformation for her clients around the world. I know that to be true. She is the creator of Soul Finder Academy and membership for your soul and host of the popular podcast, Who Can It Be Now? Um, and she is the author of our newest book in our Common Sentience series, Guides, Mystical Connections to Soul Guides and Divine Teachers. And so, Marilyn, <laughs> Please welcome to World Unity Week. I'm just laughing. Thank you so much, Ariel. And uh, I'm really excited to be here. I'm just going to say a few things. I am the least woo woo person you'll ever meet in your life. That is and true. I love <laughs> and That's I love true. The She's a Brooklyn girl. She's a Brooklyn girl through and through. That's all I'm going to Although say. when I'm channeling, I swear I don't have a Brooklyn accent when I'm channeling. I, I, I have it on recording. <laughs> um, I'm like, wow, they, I must be channeling. I'm speaking properly. Anyway, uh, thank you so much. This has been an incredible experience to do with Ariel. I am a big um, fan of sacred stories. And I really just want to speak briefly about what we're doing here is um, I believe that we are all spiritual beings, as we know, having a human experience. And I am, um, I believe that the dreams in your heart are meant to be lived and so do your guides and your guides are direct reflectors of your soul and your highest truth. And they help you to bring those dreams out into fruition and also surrender to the outcomes because guides will help you to walk the path, to communicate with them, help make really strong choices, really strong decisions in your life and then surrender to the outcome because what our spirit guides have for us is so much greater than we can even imagine because many times we're dreaming about um, our life from past experiences and they hold so much more for us. So people were talking about normalizing the conversation. People are talking about like we're in a new consciousness and that's all true. 
And what I have found with my work is we are in, we're, everybody is already in constant communication. How many of you, I'd love to see like in the chat, how many of you already see repetitive numbers? How many of you see butterflies over and over again and, and um, ladybugs and beetles? And when Ariel and I were doing this book together, I had the great opportunity of her interviewing me because it's my first book. And I was scared. This was something I'd been dreaming about. And this goes to show you what your guides can do for you. And I was really scared about doing this. And she was like, we have to meet, blah, blah, blah. And I was like pushing back, like, leave me alone. Be, you know, I'm not going to curse on this thing. And um, I really surrendered to the experience. <laughs> and Ariel and I got together and she was asking me these incredible questions. And my guides were speaking through me, which you'll get in the first part. And the first part, I really, what I love about my work with my guides, and I really feel like it's them, they allow you to see guidance in every single thing, whether it's a stone on the path, a butterfly, the beautiful angels that Trisha McCann is talking about, um, whether it's Jesus, ascended masters, your dad, the moon, it's everywhere. And when you get into communication with it, you have direction. And we, I believe we're all here to live our best and our highest and our greatest from our center of truth. And that's how I believe we come to as one because we're able to respect other people's opinions. We're able to respect our own and our guides bring us together into conversation. So I'm, I'm gonna say just a couple more things. The other thing, the stories in here, to me, that's the biggest thing that Ariel is doing. She's helping us to not feel alone. One of the things this I teach by story and one of this book things this book did to me is it made me come out on my personal page what I do. Now, I've been teaching for over 15 years around the world how to communicate with your guides. And when it came to my personal Facebook page, I hid. I really hid. And I want to thank you, Ariel, and I want to thank this opportunity. I want to thank my guides for finally getting their work out there. In the middle of this book are these incredible stories so that you don't feel alone anymore because we're done with hiding in the closet. We need to come out of the closet. We need to bring this conversation out into the masses. And we also need to respect people who are skeptics and don't understand it because that makes the conversation interesting. And then the beautiful part about this in the back is um, the experiential. I like teaching through experience and I want you to learn through experience. So I'd love everybody now, I'm gonna end in a second. Everybody right now, tell me one guide they have and tonight, before you go to bed, talk to that guide. And whether they answer you or not, trust me, they're answering you in the everyday symbolic language of your soul, which is those butterflies, those beetles, those ladybugs, everything that you're seeing, those numbers, that's how your guides speak to you. And then when you wake up this in the morning, notice how you feel and notice how you speak to yourself. One of the biggest lessons my guides gave me because I was struggling with depression was how I was speaking to myself. And I shifted it right then and there. They said, shift it. And they started helping me to speak in a beautiful way. And I want all of you to recognize the light inside your soul, to ignite it and to live it because we're all gifted. And I don't care if you had it when you're two or if you're 90, we have the ability to open up and expand our gifts right now in this moment. So make a promise to me right now that you're gonna communicate with your guides. Get my book, it's coming out. You can pre-order it now. And we do have um, book, if you go to, I don't wanna send anybody to another website, but we do have gifts for you. So Ariel can decide if that's best. I'm done, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you to all the other authors to um, be on this stage with you guys and to everybody else, because I know you have stories in you and I'm ready to, I just wanna see them and hear them. Thank you, Ariel. Oh, now they're going to just leave me up here by myself. No, um, I, <laughs> Ariel dropped out and she's okay. back in, but for some reason I can't spotlight her. I can't actually bring her on as a, um, on the main screen. Is Ben oh, no. still um, here? If you can hear me, can you hear me? Yes, I'm, we can hear okay. you. You're just not on the main screen. Those okay, are my so guys. They're kicking you off. They want me to do the whole show. <laughs> You're like, Marilyn, I, it's your time to shine. <laughs> you are you are shining. You are shining, my friend. Um, Irina, if oh. you want to bring on, here we go. Thank you. Yes, Thank you so there much. you are. Um, thanks, uh, Marilyn. I, we could we could talk for hours, but but it's time for us to talk with Oscar Mira Casada because it's time for us to talk shamanism and nature and reverence for mother earth 
Um, Cause that's where we start, isn't it? Ask her, don't we ground in our, in our connection and our reverence for our dear mother earth and all the sentient beings that walk this earth seen and unseen with us. So I wanna tell everyone about Oscar, my dear brother, Oscar. I know we, I'm pretty sure he was my little brother in a lot of different lives because when you meet Oscar, Oscar has this whole big little brother vibe to me. Um, one that would always get in a little bit of trouble, a little bit of mischief and just, you know, we're just showing up and showing out. So I'm gonna say it. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about Oscar. Absolutely love, love my brother, Oscar. Uh, he is the founder of the Heart of the Healer Shamanic Mystery School and originator of the Pachacuti Mesa tradition, cross-cultural shamanism. Oscar is internationally acclaimed shamanic teacher and healer, earth honoring ceremonialist and author of our upcoming book, Shamanism, Personal Quest of Communion with Nature and Creation, which will be released this October 11th. So, Welcome, Oscar, to our plenary, and um, please share your wisdom on shamanism and how that that can bring us or does bring us into unity. Ayyanchu tiayukui waikicha Ariel. Well, it's been a journey for sure, meeting you as well, my elder sister, <laughs> and I will always take guidance from you in whatever direction will cast me into a more peaceful merging with the mystical realm of unitive narrative consciousness that we're also dedicated to catalyzing upon this good earth. So when it comes to shamanism, uh, it's a very broad phenomena that has great relevance for today's a very transformational opportunity that we're experiencing upon planet. That said, I'd like to bring us into a alignment with what that state of non-ordinary consciousness is that is so fundamental to the shamanic work that I do, as well as to the practice of shamanism worldwide, because it is through, as Julie Cruel said, it is through that uh, engagement with non-ordinary states of awareness that we are able to truly befriend what is divine in our lives. And that is why the shamanic arts are fundamentally based on a nature venerating life way, a way in which through the befriending of various spirit guides and through the uh, honoring of soul in everything that is animated within our natural and still unseen world, we are able to enter into communion. And through that communion, we enter into alignment where we consecrate our environment through acts of beautifying and sanctifying ritual grace. And it is within this experience of participative mystique in which the mystical and the peaceful start to emerge in what is called in my tradition a kasi kausai, which is an experience of blissful repose where the heart remains open, the mind quiets, and the body relaxes into a being all that is. And in the language of my people of Peru, which is Runasimi, the mouth of the people, Quechua, I offer this experience of that peaceful, mystical, blissful repose. Allow this onomatopoeic sound of the Quechua language to reverberate within your soul body and awaken your own unitary narrative as a light worker upon planet. Haili wilka hanak pachamanta saiwa, tia yukui teksemuyoh hatun kaipang, sumah wilka pachakamak, nyokak misong kompinchis tupakui, kausai pinchis kawakui, hama ina siwa kenti sonko tikak futuininta apumui runakunak, kausai niyoh munai niyoh kanchai niyoh Amuraiku ina, nyokaiku kanchai parunakuna, pachamamak churinkuna. 
Haili ayuruna kunchinchis wilka kuyanai pusak aknana muyupi inaya. Loosely translated, this is praises and victory to the sacred shaft of light from the heavens. Welcome great power of the universe. Sublimely sacred creative source of all worlds, meet yourself in our hearts, see yourself in our lives. Please, royal hummingbird, bring the blossoming of the flower of the heart to humankind. With life, with love, and with light did we come here. We are the people of the light and children of the earth. Praises and victory to all our relations within this sacred hoop of service to all that is, so mote it be. With these words, we encapsulate to the best of my understanding of over 50 years of shamanic work, believe it or not, for I began my path in 1969 through the beloved mentorship of Don Celso Rojas Palomino, my primary shamanic teacher in the northern coastal region of Chiclayo, a village called Salas, Peru, that I apprenticed with him in the arts of Huachuma and Camasca Curanderismo, or folk healing, for 13 years. Following that, I engaged in a secondary apprenticeship with a highland healer known as Benito Coriwam Ambargas. As a result of these two experiences, my life, of course, changed dramatically, and I found myself being a stranger in a strange land and being able to walk through worlds still unrealized by most people, conditioned by the three-dimensional uh, reality that we consider a consensus experience that is very limiting, as you well know. And within that type of experience, various dormant faculties uh, having to do with clairvoyance and clairsentience, clairaudience, uh, psychokinetic abilities, all of these capacities that for a long period of time have been either denied or remained dormant within us. Now, with the advent of the great Taripaipacha, the age of reencounter, and the great transformational Pachacutis, or world era reversals that we are witnessing upon planet, are catalyzing the release of these dormant faculties. So many of the authors of this series of incredible books that is being sponsored and made available through Sacred Stories are the same type of medicine, shamanic medicine, for befriending the spiritual reality of our ancestral peoples and establishing it again as a valid, relevant, and much needed evolutionary path of healing service upon planet. These are the words I share now, and I do it with love, for love is all the medicine that we truly need at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. You know, I think that Ariel is in Portugal. So apparently it's very early in the morning. So perhaps uh, the feed isn't quite as strong as she would like it to be. But you yes, know, her she's... spirit is. So she'll be back, I'm sure, in just a moment. We'll be back. Uh, she's in Vietnam, actually. Um, Julie, do you know who was yes, supposed to go I, next? I do. I would love to bring on Valerie Love. She's going to talk about her book and reclaiming the archetype of witch. And um, we had Valerie on a Wednesday call in the community, and it stirred up so much interest and excitement and thinking about things so differently. So it's quite an honor when um, Ariel gets back, she'll read your full bio and give you a proper introduction, Valerie. But I am excited to have you. And I know many in the community were really just intrigued and inspired by your message. So I'd love to hear what you have to share with us. Thank you so much, Julie. And lots of love to everyone participating in World Unity Week. We need this. We need this. And lots of love, of course, and appreciation to Ariel. Oh, she's back, Vietnam. Ari, 
Ariel, you're back. I, I'll hand it to you, Ariel. Yeah, yeah, I, oh, okay, I'm back. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Guys, I'm in Vietnam, and I don't know why. I don't know what the connection is, but I'm coming in from somewhere. The energy is running high. So let me just say thank you again, Julie, for picking up and let me give a proper introduction to Valerie because it is time that we do Reclaim the Witch and I am thrilled, 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 thrilled that we are doing a, a book called Witch, Divine Alignments with the Elements, Energies and Cycles of Nature. And that Rev Valerie Love, also known as Kaisi, is the author of 24 books on practical spirituality, magic, the occult and Christian witchcraft as an ordained minister of spiritual consciousness practicing Christian witch and global retreat leader. Her sole mission is to inspire freedom. She is the, um, again, the author of the upcoming book, Witch, and we will be putting the call for stories out shortly. So Valerie, please share with us who the witch is um, and why it's important for us to reclaim the archetype of the witch on our path to unity. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Ariel. Thank you to everyone participating in World Unity Week. I just have to give a big shout out to everyone organizing it, everyone speaking, because we need it. The world needs it. So the witch, who is the witch? For me, a witch is a keeper of nature, an emissary of the goddess, a tender of people, souls, nature, planets, and more. Ever since I was tiny, tiny, tiny tot, I knew I was kind of different, kind of strange, weird. I don't know. Maybe you had some of those kinds of experiences, seeing things that other people weren't seeing and having mystical experiences, but I couldn't quite put it together. I grew up in the cult of Jehovah's Witnesses. It was a fundamentalist Christian experience for 26 years until I was so suffocated that I almost took myself out with a bottle of pills. And my soul gave me an ultimatum. It said, live, not exist, live. That if you're going to choose life, you're going to really live. And I said, yes. And since then, speaking of mysticism and the path to peace and speaking of unity of the world, I had to understand experientially what this thing was about that I was getting myself into. Because trust me, even though I've been a witch all my life, I really didn't have practical understanding of what that really meant. So it's critical for us to connect the head and the heart and have an experience, yes? And so it's, it's not enough just to read books, even though books are wonderful and we love all these books coming out from sacred stories and common sentience. We love all the sacred stories. We've got to get in there and have those experiences. So over the years, spirit has taken me over the last 17 years or so that I've been doing this work, has taken me to many strange and wonderful places. I would call them bizarre, even though probably to the people practicing there, it wasn't strange at all. I got to sit in sweat lodges with the Lakota and to tie prayer ties with tobacco and to hear the drumming in the sacred song and to get experientially what my soul needed from that. And to go to Peru and drink the ayahuasca, the brew, you know, the brew that comes for you. Many times we have the opportunity to lead retreats in Peru. And with our Shipibo shamans and our, our shamans that also guide us into the sacred plant medicines of San Pedro, ayahuasca, and lead us on walks through uh, the, the Inca Trail. And I got to go to Bali and go to the Balinese temples and, and there stood in the temple and just bawled, just cried my eyes out on a full moon, seeing all of the procession and the ritual. Got to go to India and really dive into these Hindu temples in India and sat with our Hindu brothers and sisters praying and chanting on the floor in a language I had never spoken before, yet my soul knew. I had to be with the witches in the woods on a Samhain fire festival, a ritual, sacred ritual with robes and more in our mystical experiences. 
I've got to go to many different churches. I even showed up in a synagogue one morning and our Jewish brothers and sisters took such good care of me. They must have said, who is this lady coming in? We have never seen her before. <laughs> and they welcomed me with open arms because I had to know, I had to have these experiences. Not to pray with our Islamic brothers and sisters in a mosque, fully clothed in this full body prayer. You know, the men on one side, the women on the other. I've been in Kenya uh, uh, with the Maasai. Everywhere I have been around this beautiful Pachamama that we call home, our starship earth, the divine is there. And we're calling to the divine in different sounds. Some have rattles, some have drums, some have flutes and more. We're all seeking this mystical experience. We're all seeking unitive consciousness. And as we're seeking it, we're understanding that we are it. There is no journey. We're already there. We're already home. We're here. We're here right now. We're home. We're coming to realize that we're home. So all of these experiences that I have had that have really fed into me as a witch and honoring nature and honoring the plant kingdom and honoring all paths. I've never met a church I didn't like. I've never met a spiritual path I didn't like. I never met a religion I didn't like. I understand that unity is an experience that we all get to have. So I would charge you, step out of your confines. You know, I grew up in the Christian experience. So, you know, we had pews, we had, you know, church, we had church on Sunday. What about going to visit people that don't have church on Sunday? Maybe they have church in the woods like the witches. Step out of your own lived experience into another mystical experience and gain that unity and reclaim the witch that lives inside of every person. Thank you, Aria. Valerie, thank you so much. Yes, can we all please reclaim our inner, inner witches that, that I truly believe is needed to reclaim the feminine, to bring balance, to bring wholeness, to bring us into unity. Thank you so much. I'm so excited, Valerie. We're announcing Valerie's call for stories for her new book, Witch Divine um, Alignments with the Elements, Energies, and Cycles of Nature. So stay tuned. If you are a witch, have a witch story, a witch experience, you'll want to submit your story for Valerie's book. Thank you. Thank and now you, we're gonna Maria. now we're gonna bring out Ash Ruiz. Ash, because now that we know. This is it. We are here. This is the experience. Ash is going to share with us how we live in just pure receptivity and joy because Ash Ruiz, I'm just delighted to introduce you to. He is the author of our another, another upcoming book called Muse, Transcendent Experiences of Pure Receptivity and Flow. And let me tell you a little bit about Ash because Ash has a lot going on. Ash is the, an author, poet, singer, songwriter, self-realization mentor, and spiritual life coach. He's a former band member of Menudo, in which HBO Max just released a special Menudo Forever Young, that, which Ash is a part of. And Ash just released, let's celebrate Ash, a new single called Something Vital, which is available now. And as I said, he is the author of our upcoming book, We'll Call for Stories as well, in our Common Sentient series, Muse, Transcendent Experiences of Pure Receptivity and Love. And Ash, welcome, welcome, welcome to World Unity Week. Oh, thank you so very much. Truly an honor to be here and to see you in all of these beautiful faces. I really feel that, you know, each little box and, and everyone listening in whatever time, <laughs> we're only talking about this moment. <laughs> it's still this moment. Whenever this is seen, you're watching this again on YouTube, here we are in this moment. And, and just feel like all of our hearts are these constellations, these bright stars and, and outshining any sense of separation, any sense of, um, of, of, of story, any sense of identity, any sense of idea. So it's truly a joy to be here. And I'm so delighted. Um, Muse, 
what a gift that we get to be hit by the truck of spirit, that we get to be kissed by the fairy of spirit, that we get to be caressed by the winds of spirit in whichever way it comes. I love that we're still, you know, um, naturally focusing on the more exaggerated expressions of the muse, the more exaggerated expressions of inspiration where there's somewhat uh, a moment of uh, divine grace in the matrix interrupting our ideas interrupting our, our our concept it's kind of like inspiration cannot wait doesn't matter what we're tending to doesn't matter where we are when it strikes when that stroke of insight when that stroke of spirit when that song when that art when that idea when that possibility that poem when that insight when that that new way of seeing things appears when the new world appears right each little shift in perception we're on a completely different planet <laughs> in a completely different universe and it's really great that we have these more pronounced, exaggerated versions. But what I love is that those moments can eventually lead us to recognizing, even in the mundane, everyday, somewhat seemingly to the mind, blahness of life, we could always find inspiration. We could always find the muse. The muse can penetrate. You know what's really sweet? Um, when it comes to phenomena serving as the exaltation of the seamless stability of being that is here, it is all equal. There isn't one aspect of phenomena that announces the reality of what is aware loving, intelligent, more than any other. Just as when you have the sun shining on some object, doesn't matter if it's an object of a sandal, a chancleta, or a Buddha, you get in either Thailand or at Target. It doesn't matter that expression. <laughs> Each shadow equally says there is light here. Each shadow equally says there is awareness here. Just as each experience exalts, announces, kind of like the trumpets of the angels, that there is freedom here. Awareness unmoving, awareness unwavering, awareness naturally present here, delighted to express itself as all of these expressions, angels, guides, shamans, healers, singers, teachers, mothers, fathers, uncles, and aunts, and witches, beloved. <laughs> such a joy, such a joy. I would love to um, celebrate this muse. Is it cool if I do a short poem for the beloveds? Okay, great. <laughs> uh, this is a poem called Infinity Smith, and it simply says, Sacred geometry, watch it fly out of me. Sonic astronomy, this be vocal alchemy, toning my way into Ganesha's balcony. The view from in here is a Celestine prophecy. Angels with microphones, goddesses sing. Lakshmi's ascending on blood butterfly wings. Cosmic disclosures about identity. The only life here is the one listening. The only life here is the one listening. The only life here is the one. Listen so sweetly that you disappear. Listen so clearly until you're not here. Not here is a thought, not here is a body. Not here is the one trying to get to the party because right where you are without, think, without changing a thing is the one celebration, the only big bang. You've never not been the pure presence of love. You cannot experience there's not enough for atoms keep flying right out of God's pocket. It's your face on the idea that God has in her wallet. No no need to say it, but I'm going to call it. You've always been you and you've always been balling. Your name is Abundance Jackson. Your name is Prosperity Jenkins. Your name is Infinity Smith, exalting the reality of indescribable bliss. Your name is God Loves Me Gonzalez. Your name is God Is Me Ruiz. Your name is the sacred, immeasurable beauty that brings everything here to its knees. Confusion. Confusion is not just for the wealthy. Confusion is not just for the poor. Confusion is but the unquestioned assumption that this moment should be something more, more this, more that, more Cadillacs, pure imagination. Or maybe not tending to the here and now, 
contributes to global devastation. Maybe not taking the time to invest in the silence found in meditation gives rise to the hurt and the pain we inflict on ourselves misidentification. Skin lines, timelines, them their lines drawn on a map. The only word I can find to rhyme with the assumptions of lines is crap. The you me that gives rise to destinies has only ever existed as flashing possibilities. A thought in the mind of God, a God in the mind of thought. It's a good thing this here golden perfection has never ever once been caught up in mental elaboration. Thank heavens for evaporation. For the ingredients of separation can not survive the shine of this here con confirmation. Your name is Abundance Jackson. Your name is Prosperity Jenkins. Your name is Infinity Smith, exalting the reality of indescribable bliss. Your name is God loves me, Gonzalez. Your name is God is me, Ruiz. Your name is the sacred, immeasurable beauty that brings everything here to its knees. Your name, the sacred, immeasurable beauty that brings everything here to its knees. Ash, thank you. That is the muse. There you have it. That is the muse. And thank you so much. And to finish up this incredible plenary session, we can't finish without prayer, right? We are prayer. Prayer is in all that we do. So I'd like to bring on our final guest, Temple Hayes, Rev. Temple Hayes. I will tell you uh, a little bit about Temple. Um, Temple, thank you so much for being with us. Temple, Rev. Temple Hayes, my goodness, is described as a prophet and mystic for our times, and she's a new spiritual leader the world needs today. She is a science of mind minister and a unity minister. She's a difference maker, spiritual leader, international motivational speaker, humanitarian, life rights act activist and a shamanic practitioner and she is the author of our upcoming book prayer experiences of divine presence for profound life changes and radical life awakenings uh temple temple thank you so much for being here with us and your new book which the call for stories will be coming out as well is going to expand expand and redefine prayer so i have to say we just have just a couple minutes left i can't yeah, believe I know. it but I, I, I know i saw that that we are like i'm so sorry nope. um, i'm so sorry but please you're okay please you're share. okay ariel Patru ariel yes. and temple you're okay Do yeah you go to oh okay. okay temple take you take yeah, your time i wasn't trying to cut you short i was just trying to say bring us bring us home with prayer um well, knowing we're I, coming home what I love about this entire series it, to be inclusive of others is that it's really magical to me that we are taking a word that can be so confused or already predecided about what people think it is, such as shamanism or witches or angels or guides or meditation or prayer, whatever those are, you know, often people in their own meaning well, they predecide what something means. And I see often when tragedy has happened in our world where people will say, please don't say one more time, I'm praying for you and, and all that, because that means absolutely nothing. And so my intention along with Ariel's in creating this book called Prayer is more often than not, we have a predecided decision about what it was made or maybe something that we were introduced to by our family system, or maybe it's a generational belief system. But the power of prayer is something that is extremely individual and it changes with your vibration from third dimension to fifth dimension. And there are so many different ways in which people can experience. And the main reason for the experience when we call out loud this word called prayer is that we are simply connecting from our heart. We are moving beyond our mind, which continues to create and perceive and filter information of what we already know. And the true identification of prayer opens us up, opens our heart up to something that we do not know. It is true and it is evident that now there is not an elite group of mystics on the planet because we are coming out of two or three years of never knowing what's going to happen next with the pandemic and everything else. So it has opened our heart to a vulnerability of being willing, truly being willing to accept that we have an illusion of control and we are going to release that into the ethers so that we may step into this powerhouse 
this miraculous being that we have always been. And that is part of my intention with this book, with the authors that we are featuring from Judaic prayers to shamanic prayers to all different types of layers of prayers is for people to see that we are not broken. We are whole, we are holy. We have never been broken. We have been greatly duped by 24 hour breaking news. And we're gonna have the capacity to open up to a greater space and understand that the world isn't broken we're not broken and we step into a greater place of who we are and so it is and thank you for having me today and it's a pleasure temple i love that you're the person who closed this although i'm sure ariel has something to share and julie but what a perfect circle you know really yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask Temple. Thank you so much. I mean, we, 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 we start with the angels and we close with prayer and we cover the myriad of our experiences, even just touching on the myriad, because there are so many ways that we experience the divine or the divine experiences or expresses through us. So if I could bring, yes, if we could bring everyone on, bring on Oscar, thank you, and Valerie and Marilyn. Um, I think there'll be nine of us if Marilyn is still here. Um, and I just want to say, and I want to give Julie a minute to, to wrap this up as well, but I just want to say, first of all, thank you to all of the authors that are on this uh, with us today. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for leading us as modern day mystics. Thank you for bringing us out of the spiritual closet and the mystical to the mainstream. Thank you for normalizing the non-ordinary. Thank you for allowing and showing us how to be our authentic selves and allowing others to do so as well. So that for me is the call. That for me is the is unity, the path to peace. Um, and I want to say thank you to all of you. And I want to give Julie, my brilliant, brilliant co-host, the last, the last words. And thank you to Irina, who looks absolutely beautiful, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, who's with us as well. Ariel, and, who, and who has a story in the meditation book. Sorry, I just want to say that Irina is also a contributing author to Sister Jenna's meditation book. So she's, you know, she is uh, with us. For all of us to say that you're the visionary that came up with this idea of common sentience and so i think all of us really want to give you a great thanks for for holding this vision and i know it hasn't been easy and you're only part way through it because we're all so busy but you know i know working with you you are very focused and you're so committed and it's from the heart and i think we all feel that from you thank you trisha Thank you. I appreciate that. Me and my angels, the A-team. It's the A-team. Always the A-team. So, so thank you. And uh, Julie, Julie, last words, my friend, and deep gratitude to you today. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, I I hold the same um, sentiment, Ariel, that, that what a beautiful collection. And you are contributing in so many amazing ways to this. The, the, I just want to pull this two thoughts through just to close us here today because the topic is modern day mysticism is the path to peace. So first I just want to presence this as we're moving um, of unity toward peace here and talking about this 99 days that we all understand that internal state of peace that comes when we do ground ourselves in this unitive consciousness. And so thank you all for being here. And then, then the other piece that I'm so reminded of is here we're talking about modern day mysticism because we've been in the closet, but it's ancient. It's who we've been from the beginning. It, unity is, as, as we learned in our last statement, this is ancient spiritual truth of who we be on the planet so it is time for us to just come back in and embrace this and fully embody it and all of us come out of the closet together just like these books help us see that everybody's stories we're not alone anymore let's bring the ancient back into the modern day here thank you so much ariel thank you ben bowler and thank you all authors this has been a true joy and a pleasure to to bring your voices here
Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you, Otis. Thank you so much for being uh, with us. And we hope to see more of you um, in our network and, and um, in our events. Um, if I can just ask everyone to perhaps stay for another couple of minutes as we're going to play a video of um, our another sponsor, actually our primary sponsor, Purpose Earth, who's also doing an incredible work um, distributing grants to people or individuals and organizations who are trying to make a change in the world. Um, and they're doing that all over the world. So, Ben, if you'd like to play the video now and we can then conclude this incredible session. let go of our all of our barriers and 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 the things that told us to not do you know and let go of everything and really participate in oneness humanity and really care for each other